I want to ask you about fatherhood. So I have a note here that fatherhood has been the best thing you've ever done. And as someone who does not yet have children, but someday hopes to, could you please expand on that? I'd love to hear why that is the case. Well, I only have five children. Uh, <laughs> you got some work to do to catch up with Elon, but exactly. you're doing all right. There are others who've beaten me and I, I won't catch up. I'm too old to have any more children. Because in the end, you can have children of, at 58, but you will not be good at soccer when they are ready for <laughs> soccer. And uh, you have a moral obligation to be able to go and kick that ball around I have children who range in age from 28 down to five. And I can say unequivocally that they are the best thing that ever happened to me. And the thing I care, the people I care most about. And I never tire of watching them grow, helping them in any way I can. Fatherhood for me has been more fulfilling than I would ever have imagined. I think most people, most men, let me say, most men before they become fathers secretly dread the loss of freedom, the regime of, of diapers, and the prospect of being vomited on. And all of these things will happen when you become a father. You will be vomited on. Uh, diapers will become a very large and unpleasant part of your life. And you won't be able to go out anything like you were able to before. On the other hand, there is something far more fulfilling about helping an, an infant uh, learn than, than anything, is, anything else that's available to us. So I don't know that I've been at all a great father. I think I've been okay. And the way I would think about the role is is yeah it's very much pedagogical i i very assiduously read to my children and get them to read and make books a big part of of life i think that's that's really critical because these days as children grow up there are way more distractions than there were in, in my day and, and you have to make a constant concentrated effort as a parent to make sure that they get into the habit of reading reading books, because almost all the accumulated wisdom of our species is in fact contained in books. And some of these books are quite old and unlikely to be assigned in contemporary education. So that's a big part of it. Then there's all the kind of, that funny business of, of teaching children to be good. What is it to be good? What is it to be kind? How does one actually convey that? How can one make a child creative without over scheduling them with Monday's piano, Tuesday's coding, Wednesday's Mandarin, you know, that kind of typical parenting. And I'm I'm still, you know, I'm still learning. I'm still trying to get better at it. But at the same time making sure that all all the children got the same kind of deal. Because I'm quite egalitarian about these things. And uh, there can be no favoritism. They all must think they're the favorite. So these are the things that if if you gave me the chance, I would talk about with greater enthusiasm and at greater length than, than about anything else. But, you know, nobody really wants to listen to somebody else talk about their children. It's the world's most boring subject. Just like, you know, when people get out their phones to show you pictures of, of their children and then they can't find them because they have too many pictures. A little part of you dies, right? Because it's, it's not that interesting. <laughs> well, to me at the moment, this is interesting. So since, since I have the mic in front of me, I'll keep, I'll keep prying. When you said... I'm okay, and I might be getting the exact phrasing wrong, not great. Why do you say that? Absence, because Absence. part of my life's journey took me away and continues to take me away from my children quite a bit. There's that great moment in one of the Austin Powers movies, Daddy Wasn't There. Do you remember that? <laughs> Yes, we all do. love Austin Powers in our family, and it's part of being a Ferguson that you watch the Austin Powers movies much earlier than is appropriate. <laughs> but I've I've been away a lot. I mean, I I was I was so negligent as to take a job in the United States in two thousand two or thereabouts when I had three children in school in England, and my then wife wouldn't move, and 
I remember saying, well, if I stay, if I don't go, I'll, I'll regress it. So I'll commute. And that, that was a little bit crazy, and I wouldn't advise anybody to do that. I me- it meant that I was away quite a lot. It probably made the breakdown of the marriage inevitable. So yeah, you know, I, I think my older children would all agree that they didn't see enough of me. And, and I've had to compensate for the, those absences by, you know, trying to be present in, in other ways. So, you know, it's difficult. I think the truth is that if you're trying to lead three careers, as you said at the beginning, if you're trying to do good academic work and at the same time engage in some kind of public life and then also do all this advising, sure, you're going you're gonna to work 17-hour days and you'll be in New York and Washington and London. And I used to travel to the point of insanity prior to the pandemic. And then the pandemic stopped that, forced me to stop. And for a year, I lived in Montana, and I didn't travel more than about five miles from the house. And so I saw the two younger children every day, and it was wonderful. It was wonderful. My, my now 10-year-old and I would go for a walk every day. We called it the philosophical walk. And it was after he'd done with his schoolwork, and I had sort of done enough work on my then current book, and we would just have a walk. Mm. I wasn't doing that before, and I'm doing it less now. So, no, no, I'm not going to get great. But the test is always: Are your children going to turn to you in the moment of crisis? Are they going to tell you the good news uh, when there is good news? Are you able to remain in contact even when there's a great distance geographically between you? And on that basis. You know, I think I get a B plus. And I, you know, I would say to anybody who's highly motivated, super driven type A personality, do what you have to do, but remember the relationship that you have with your children is more important than anything else. And on your tombstone, it doesn't say wrote 150 emails a day or closed <laughs> X deals, or it doesn't say publish 16 books. That's not what the gravestones say. They talk about whether you were a good son, whether you were a good husband, and whether you were a good father. That's the gravestone. People forget that, but that's the gravestone. 